So, so let's just get started, as I said. Sumo development update. Ricky, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, so last week we were all in Santa Cruz. Um, we weren't thinking about Sumo too much. And we didn't get a whole lot done for Sumo, but uh, we have a lot of energy and we're ready to get started again this week. Uh, we're, we're finishing up the our A sprint tomorrow. Um, and that was focusing on starting search unification and the little stats indicator for the questions so that we always show like what percentage of questions are answered from the last three days or so. Yeah, 72 hours. Um, that is almost done, should land between today and tomorrow. Um, okay. And the next sprint. I can tell on. you it looks awesome and you will love it. Yes, but that's thanks to Brown, not thanks to me. But oh. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I don't want to take credit for that. <laughs> All right, I wasn't going to take credit for that. Uh, yeah. So when so next sprint, um, we're continuing on search unification, and we're going to start uh, backend changes for the new IA, which I think is like new landing pages and a bunch of other stuff. Um, Kadir can probably fill in the details there if you want them. <laughs> That's me. Oh, all right, cool. Well, so there was your... the, I was going to say about back end changes for the new IA. I mean, I know there was the, the things like the interim stuff that Michelle filed bugs for landing pages, but are, you're not talking about the thing that we had like a long, long discussion about, like Ebay's idea of how we no. would have presentation and information architecture separated thing, not that, right? No, that's not it. Uh, Michael, uh, I also asked you something on, on IRC. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but oh. basically we should talk about that in this week's KB meeting to come to a decision because we need to implement that fairly soon uh, for that to be available uh, after the redesign. Right. So uh, we need to have an answer for that. Uh, and, and then we can uh, move forward and implement that. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions for Ricky? So how was the work week? I, I, you said that you didn't spend a lot of time on Sumo. I guess that means coding. I hope you talked about Sumo at least. Yes. Or did you just oh. have a good time? I saw Ricky on a... On a Merry-go-round or something. Did you see that? Did you see those pictures? <laughs> yes. Oh, I didn't see that. Check out my Where new Twitter. Pictures? Check out my new Twitter avatar or whatever you call it for a <laughs> Um. Yeah. So we had like a mini on conference. We did like a lot of talks. Of course, I talked about Sumo. I talked about Moss Camp and community and stuff. Um. And then on Thursday we had a hack day. Uh. And we. We built a bunch of boot to Gecko apps, and it was huh. pretty awesome. So we're going to actually blog about all that, and I can share that once we summarize what happened. OK, cool. Yeah, and, and you and I will, are talking tomorrow. I was just curious if there was any highlights we're sharing in this meeting. Uh, OK, any, any other questions for Ricky? Development? OK, let's move on then to UX and Brom good evening good night uh, unmute please <laughs> hello? hello 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 there you go okay am, am I in yes okay great I couldn't hear Ricky so I, I didn't know what's wrong okay cool so uh, so, like Ricky, I was actually traveling uh, as well last week. So I uh, I was traveling for the uh, contributors uh, engagement. So we were meeting with four advertising agencies. Mozilla's going to uh, it sort of invest in an ad campaign in Indonesia. So so everything is good. Uh, but that's unrelated to Sumo. So. In the meantime, I have been working work days uh, on Sumo on normal hours, which is why you never see me on IRC. That's why, because I don't work late nights last week. So uh, first of all, thank you, Bertie and Michelle, for porting the new IA to the to the to the production side. So 
uh, they look awesome. Thanks for adding all of that icon. I, I hope they, they will work well. They will reduce the, a lot of the questions we have. So, so there's that. And uh, let me see. And Susan and I had been working on a bunch of planning documents for the paper prototyping. Uh, you can see basically what we are going to test, uh, when we're going to test it, and uh, kind of what we need to, and kind of what led us to, to, to testing those things, like things that we think are important. So please check the, uh, the research planning documents. They're actually under a heading called Paper Prototyping Planning. It's a long header. Uh, yeah, so, there's, so there are three documents there, including the documents that we will give to the recruiter uh, to be able to recruit users for, for our test. So, so that's done. Um, but that's that. We're, we're actually going to do just phone recruiting, call people, and, and, and ask them to, to do the, the thing. Uh, also, uh, last week, I have worked on the mobile wireframes. You might have seen the desktop wireframes uh what is it like two weeks ago or three weeks ago the mobile wireframes you can see now it is just under the heading ux uh they're not done but as always you know i'm still revising them but that's going to be sort of the canonical url where you're where you can get the latest version of the you know of the mobile wireframe before before we test them so after this meeting what i will do is i will post the design to the proposed uh, ask a question flow. Thanks for all of your feedback uh, to like the thing that I posted uh, last week and then, you know, Verdi posted it in the forum. So thanks for all that feedback. So I am working on the wireframes now because we are going to test it, right? So, um, so yeah, so, so I'm going to post that at the end of today or after the meeting or something like that. So you all can, can also see it and, and sort of Give feedback on the ask a question since the ask a question is still kind of under a lot of debates you know we're not as done with the ask a question as we are about the right. ia so uh, yeah so hopefully the wireframes can get a lot of discussions done so uh last thing uh testing starts on may 23rd uh may 25th and may 29th uh and at the end of that we'll have the final kind of wireframes that that we can work on that's that's my update. Uh, uh, so that means that wait. Uh, so by that means. Sorry, just to be clear. That means that we are deviating from the original schedule by one week. So we are starting uh, the testing one week later because it took uh, the recruiter longer to recruit people and um, also to get a place. So everything is shifted by one week, and we will start. Uh, we will have the final wireframes uh, and be able to give them to the UI design, the visual designer, uh, on June fourth. How does that and affect uh, our implementation forecast? So implement how much are we going to be able to do within Q two? Well, that depends very much on uh, first on what the um, what the result of the paper prototyping is. Because based on that we will have, uh, based on that we will do the visual design, and based on that we can actually get estimates from the development team on um, what to well, implement I mean, should, and how long. Shouldn't it be possible to get an estimate based on the paper prototype will affect uh, the layout of the navigation, the the interface, but w how much is that going to affect the actual implementation time? I I don't know. Maybe this is a question between Brom and and Ricky in this case. But I'm just curious, I mean, I, I mean, couldn't we get an estimate at this point? Or is it really that impossible to know until we have the very final mock-ups? Who wants to answer and that? Can we, and can we start, my, my main thing is, can we start working on, on part of the visual new style, uh, like new icons, new things that don't require wireframes? And maybe we can win one week or two from the visual designer. Uh, yes. So, so oh, go ahead. No, sorry. Um, so about the uh, estimation for uh, the the um, new IA, I think it depends on 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 a big part on how that will look like uh, in the um, uh, with the new sorry with the after the paper prototyping, we will have a good idea of what it will look like, but also.
of how it will work like, because it will also take the workflow is actually working for people or not. Um, so based on that, a lot of things might change. Um, and that's the reason why we wanted to do the estimation only after we actually have that. Uh, before that, we can make an estimate, but it will be very wild. But, but what I'm trying to figure out is, would it be possible to get an estimate and an overview of the implementation time that is required to do this at this point as well? For example, if, if um, let's say, Ricky, I don't, Ricky, I don't know if you've, uh, you probably also looked at the paper prototypes at this point, so you may be already having a sense of what type of development work is we're talking about here. But would that, would that be helpful to have that? Because I feel like I don't need, you know, I, I look at the implementation, the, the time that's blocked out for this, and it's one month or four weeks. And I, if we don't even know if that's realistic, we have no idea is basically what, what I'm reading your answer, Kadir. And that, that makes me very, uncon very uncomfortable. Uh, I'm wondering, is it possible to get an estimate based on what we know about this paper pro prototypes? And, and could, could we work together with UX and development to try to figure that out? I think if we have uh, some sort of wireframes or, of, I mean, once we have an idea of what's, of what we're going to do, that will help. Okay, so you and so you're saying that we don't have that idea until the, the I guess the paper prototypes are well, finalized by the 23rd. Well, well they don't have to be finalized if, if they if we have a good an idea of right. what's going to happen. Well, I I, that's David, what I don't know. What I think Dave is trying to say is if you look at the the wireframes that Brom already shared like two weeks ago, it's all different versions of the same thing. It's like, we're going to have these kind of links on the front page, or they'll be in a grid, or they're going to be in a row. It's like not, it seems trivial, the differences in implementation. Yeah, yeah th that's what I'm trying to, to get at, is, is that no matter how we arrange these things, I don't, I don't see uh, you know, a, a, a vast difference in the, in the implementation time, unless we're doing something really crazy about the visualization of this, which I, I expect that we aren't, considering how the, the, the wireframes look like, or sorry, the, the, the paper prototypes. So I don't understand so why we're, we, we're not even uh, trying to get a, an estimate of the, of the development time when that is actually a critical part of this. Well, so, I mean, we can't do that. Well, let me, let me tell you, so we didn't have paper prototypes for the longest time. Now that we, can, we have them, we can have a look at them again. But the thing is, we'll maybe have an estimate uh, maybe two weeks or one week before uh, the actual paper prototyping is done. So after that, there might still be changes. And keep in mind that we have one day between each uh, test exactly to change the paper prototypes, to change them and test them with the next person. So even the ones that you're seeing today are not uh, the final ones. Like we are not going to select one of them, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to go through iterations over the week of testing. So at the end but of that week, it could be totally different again. Um, but we that can is take fine. a first step. My my point is that it shouldn't really matter how the the, the actual end product will look like because it's it, it amounts to roughly the same implementation time regardless regardless of if you put the navigation to, to the left or the breadcrumb the article however you design it should be the exact or pretty much the same amount of development time and what I'm trying to do is to I'm trying to make sure that we have a clear understanding of how the total roadmap and timeline looks like right now we're blocking out four weeks of implementation time for this and it's uh, apparently very, very unknown if that is enough or if it's too much. So I'd like some input from development and UX to try to figure out, is this a realistic approach to try to hit the four-week target? Or do we need to set aside six weeks for this? And if we do, then, then I'd like to know that before we start rather than after. Yeah, just to be right. clear, you're right with the UI part. Uh, changing that is probably trivial or rather doesn't change the roadmap much. But if it changes the interaction, that might be different. And uh, just up front, we already said that uh, that time, that one month, is just blocking something until we know uh, what's actually going on there. So it's not one month, one month blocked, and that specifically, I mean, it's not that we know it's going to take one month. It's just a block because we didn't know exactly. So what we can do now is we can do that either today, 
we can do the uh, estimation, or we can wait uh, a week or two until uh, the paper prototyping is done, um, and then we know how long it's going to take, and it will much it will be much clearer. So. Well, so so uh, yes, you're right. We could we could do it today, or we could do it in t a couple of weeks. I guess I'm biased towards doing it today, but but I like a better understanding of. I guess this is also depends on on if it's useful for Ricky to know this and 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 how he how the work of implementing this will di be distributed within his team. But but I I would imagine that it would be useful to know this sooner rather than later. Uh, Ricky, you can certainly correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but that's yeah. that's how I would approach it. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, I was just gonna say like, um, once <laughs> once the prototype or the wireframes are stable enough, where it's not like a lot of different crazy ideas, then it would make sense for me to look at it. But before that, um, I, I I don't know. Yeah, because then well, we're looking at a lot of different options. But if you're saying the options are all similar, then sure, I'll. I'll look at them. Well, 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 that's why I want this dialogue between UX and development. I guess is is because I don't know if the if if it's just the arrangement or if it's like Kadir is implying that it's also functionality difference that may or may not uh, mean a significant change in the in, in the total implementation time. But that's why I think it would be useful to have this this more open dialogue where where maybe you get an early heads up on what's coming up and what's not coming up. Because I also like to know if 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 it's for example, let's say that we have a paper prototype that we shouldn't talk too much about this. I'm, I feel like I'm already um, observing too much time on this, but so maybe this is a, a, something for so a separate meeting. Yeah, can we set up a meeting, uh, Bram and Kadir, uh, and whoever else wants to join later this week, yeah. and just so I can get up to speed on everything? Yeah, yeah, that's probably we'll better. Figure it out. Okay. Otherwise, I could ramble okay. for another 10 minutes, and it's not useful. So, <laughs> but anyway, point being that I, I like to have an understanding so we can at least plan this roadmap more realistically than we can today. I don't want just a block. I want a realistic block. Isn't within right, a ballpark. Some okay. of the some of the behind the some of the uh, back end stuff for the new IA that would be part of that discussion. The stuff that we we're going to talk about on Thursday too. That would affect how long it will take to implement it. Right. Maybe this is part of that, or this has to come after that discussion. I don't know. Right. Uh, well, what I can uh, what I can tell you is that uh, while we don't have the design or the layout, right, at least the final design or the final layout, we know exactly what needs to be on each page, right? We know we need to have this navigation. We need, you know, we know we have to have that navigation, and so on and so forth, right? So. So technically, if, if you are going about it, you know, kind of without any CSS, right? You can kind of build like a, like a like an unstyled HTML thing, you know, because all the contents uh, Susan had actually specified. Hey, you need to have a language reflector here. You need to have a sign in here. You need to have a search bar here. So, um, so so yeah. So in a way, we kind of know what needs to be on on each page. Uh, we need to design it. You know, I mean. What I've uh, what I've done is actually translating those requirements into designing something that looks good and that will work. Uh, but we know, you know, I mean, we the IA actually tells you what needs to be on it, so you can actually look at it and and maybe not get a visual representation, but you can kind of get a data kind of representation of it. And then you can kind of look at my wireframes for one of the ways that it could look like, even though it's not final, right? But it's kind of helpful to start thinking about it, sort of that way you know some things are on the top some things are on the bottom okay uh so so brahm rather than setting up a separate meeting for this you know, what what if you told ricky and kadir when you feel like the wireframes are close enough to something that is representative to to how it might look like so that that is the cue for ricky to start to look at that and then provide a better estimate of how much time this might take for his team to implement would that right. make more sense? So, because it Actually, feels like yeah. that is just a few days away anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that will actually, you know, I mean, we'll need to test it. I mean, we'll need to finalize the wireframes for testing anyway, right? So That's a month away. I think before that happened, uh, I, I'm sorry, could you? I said so that, but that's a month away. Testing the wireframes right. well, until the end of it. Not month. really, no. Well, three weeks. Not really. I mean, we're, we're, we're actually, yeah, it's three weeks. Well, we're actually planning to do a some pilot testing 
before the actual before the actual like testing where we pay users we actually just plan on doing some some small pilot testing so uh you can probably look at it at the pilot testing or before the pilot testing and that'll be pretty you know if we tweak things then we'll probably tweak the wording or something uh but we won't okay. tweak things majorly unless they're causing unless they're causing problems right so um but just so i understand that's about two weeks from now because you're talking about the testing starting on May 23rd, so presumably you would have this finished before that, right? Of course, yeah. I'll, I actually plan on doing the pilot testing like sometime this week, at the end of this week or early next week. I uh, see. Because, yeah, because Susan and Crystal will need to do their own pilot testing in Portland uh, next week, right? So okay. I need to get mine done next week, basically, right? So, uh, yeah, so that's, you know... Well, well, let's let's make that our timeline then, and let's let's hold off on the discussion on an actual implementation period for for Ricky until we have that finalization of the the the, the wireframes for testing. Does that sound reasonable to you, Ricky? Yes. Okay. Sorry for um, taking up so much time about this, and even considering how to phrase the fact that I'm taking up too much time on it. But but it sounds like we have a plan. Uh, let's. Any other questions f about UX before we move on to roundtable? All right. Thank you very much, Brom, and thank you, Ricky, for your participation. Uh, over to roundtable, and we have three presentations, as I said before. So let's just dig right in. Uh, I see that Eba, you listed your presentation at the top, so the floor is yours. Do you have any slides to share, or? Yep. I don't know if we can do it. Let's give it a try. You should be able to share your screen somehow. Yeah, one second. Oh, do, 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 do. Let's see how this works. It's the first time I'm trying it, so it's share. Okay. See anything? Yep. Yep. Yeah. This works. I what see you're not now? using LibreOffice though. That's a shame, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that should uh, be a requirement of this team. <laughs> I I use OpenOffice for everything but Keynote. Uh, I'm a sucker for Keynote on all the presentations. Sorry. I I actually agree with you, uh, Ebay, but uh, I I'm I'm gonna pretend that I don't. <laughs> okay. I don't judge you. I don't judge you. Just fair enough. Uh, even though Excel, I mean, we we have a conversation about it, but usually it's good enough. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to give a super quick uh, introduction to what Kilimanjaro means, because I know that a lot of people in the team was wondering, uh, especially three, four weeks ago, what the heck was going on with all these products. What was uh, the common story and so on. Uh, the interesting thing is that last week there have been some public announcements around Kilimanjaro and, and how Mozilla is evolving to to a new realm. So I wanted to make a presentation around the story of services because I think that the story of services defines, or at least the story of my role defines pretty well what's due to come. So I call it the new Mozilla. Uh, when I was hired in early 2011, uh, we were the services team was handling uh, Sync, Firefox Sync, the whole infrastructure for it, Firefox Home as a client for Firefox Sync, and and in the side we're exploring new a couple of new things like uh, identity as an account manager at that time it was a fuzzy idea of what we wanted to 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 achieve with this and and then we have a lot of ideas around new services but there wasn't much of an implementation yet uh again this is like super broad and some of these things are probably not technically correct but i just wanted to give you a, a an overall picture of what's going on and, and then in the side, we have labs, as you all may know. And one of the big praise of labs was uh, open web apps. And 
that's important to to keep in mind because around summer uh, there was a housekeeping or let's call it I, I call it housekeeping or like refocus at Mozilla and what happened was that identity was graduated as a, as its own product and Dan Mills Thunder and Benedita started to drive this project as a separate entity from from services open web apps was graduated from labs to its own project firefox home was reshaped to something more webby because we were the uh, we're building a, a native app and, and we decided to move to a, an html5 app that will do something similar and we'll Eli? find out later that sorry yeah, sorry, I'm not sure if you see me wait, but I'm just wondering, are we supposed to still be on the same, on the first slide? Uh, or, no, or uh, you're, sorry. Because I, I just wanted to point that out, that I'm, I'm I still see the first slide. Here, here we go. Is everyone in the first slide? No, now I see a new slide. Now it's the fourth. Yeah. But so I think we the missed the other. If I, <laughs> okay, if I last, are you seeing like the full screen or? No, we see the. I see the. I don't. I guess see, everyone else sees the same thing. Interface. I see the. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Let me. Let me try to change that. Uh, apparently, you cannot do it. So, I, I will, will keep going with this if if it's okay with you. So, yeah. I mean, the the slides are simple, so you haven't missed much. I was in the summer housekeeping. Uh, talking about Firefox Home, that was redefined to Pancake, and it's still a project that it's unclear uh, what it's trying to achieve, but basically it's trying to fill the gap that Firefox Home left. Uh, surf services was kind of simplified to sync, and main, uh, the main focus of the team uh, turned out to be sync and infrastructure for other 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 products instead of instead of driving products themselves and then on the side we we found out that we were developing something called book to gecko uh, that is a full os based on html5 and here we are so early 2012 we have a, a full new set of products from Mozilla Persona and Browser ID uh, as a technology that supports Mozilla Persona. It's a login system for those who don't know about it. Apps and the marketplace, the Mozilla marketplace, that is a, an application platform uh, sync that is the main product for services, but now services is also developing notifications uh, as a product. And Butu Gecko, that is the phone OS that we were talking about before. Uh, but we found out that we we're going way too fast trying to like drive this product separately, like chickens without eggs. <laughs> and we went to the Mobile World Congress in February. Uh, and we were trying to explain that Mozilla wasn't Firefox anymore, uh, Firefox and Thunderbird anymore and suddenly we have an, an android browser we have an id system an open web apps platform and boot to gecko as a as an os and telling five stories separately came out as a really challenging story a, a really challenging value proposition to sell so after that, the team started to, like, all the teams started to unify the story, try to come out with something that makes sense. And it's interesting to, to put all these products together because they, they all make sense. I mean, Sync is used to sync apps, uh, what is called apps in the cloud. You will start hearing that more and more often. Uh, Persona is used to log as a login system in the marketplace. Apps run in Boot to Gecko, so Boot to Gecko needs apps and apps that are writing in HTML5. So our app ecosystem is perfect for Boot to Gecko. 
uh, Sync could evolve to something more stable and be something like the Moth Cloud, where you can sync your contacts, uh, your all your settings, all your preferences, all your apps. Could be like a, your cloud of the web, basically the web as a platform, as we're preaching. And Persona is the way where is your gateway to your online data in Sync. So Persona will end up being the login system for Sync. Uh, so it, as I say, I mean, everything comes comes together and, and builds a really interesting story. So what represents this for Sumo? We already started to work on some of the pieces. Uh, in one hand, Bram is already making sure that our our infrastructure and our IA is flexible enough that so it allows us to surface all these new products and all these new features in the right way. We're also building a help desk to support the app ecosystem. Why that's why we, we have Tyler on on the team. Uh, Persona will read if how sync is perceived. Probably Persona will end up being end up building something like uh, login to the browser. So we'll be logged in with Persona in Firefox. So Sync will not be a, a feature, but it will be something more deep into Firefox. And we'll need to figure out how that's perceived from the user point of view. Because probably they will start talking about login to the browser instead of Sync when they come to us to Sumo. And we are starting to investigate what are the implications from boot together and i'll keep you posted with that we have a meeting with product in the next week and product has already started to talk with telefonica about it so uh i will i'll be back with more info soon but basically those are like the four pillars of what's going on and the future is even more exciting because persona is it's exploring uh, how can they support micropayments on the marketplace or in general on the web? Uh, we will see more and more of sync and services in general as the Moth Cloud, or this is like I came up with this name, but basically it's how Mozilla can offer a set of services in the cloud and apps in sync uh, across your devices. Uh, at the end, the web is the platform. That's our new motto. And that's that's pretty much it. I don't know. You have questions around this? Wait. Yeah. So, yeah. so you didn't say what Kilimanjaro? Sorry. Is. Oh, Kilimanjaro is this story. Sorry, Kilimanjaro <laughs> is the event that will make all this a single story. It's it's a milestone that unifies the story again. So we'll go from being completely crazy driving on 200 kilometers per hour or 120 miles per hour to having a unified story. So next Mobile World Congress will go with one single story instead of five stories. Yeah, so I mean, can, can Kilimanjaro you talk about is really the a point in time also. It's a point in time where all of these different products and services it, it, it's kind of it's a set of, right. It's a set of requirements for each and every product and service, and also a point in time where all of these requirements need to be met. So we know that by the time we reach Kilimanjaro, we have fulfilled a set of requirements for all of these interdependencies between these services. That means that we can um, do a lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ivan, can you talk about the milestones? So the you have, I mean, I, I didn't want to cover the technical part, but basically uh, September is where the milestone, the first milestone happened, and we call it Kilimanjaro to that milestone in September. It's basically uh, when the engineering team will deliver what the product asks, uh, and product basically asks for the features they need to tell the story together. Uh, there is a page on the wiki that uh, covers all those user stories, and I can put that on the on our wiki, so you can you can read about it. But basically, it's a so, set of eight 
around eight user stories that tell the story together. What I tried to cover in that slide, really basically, or really simply, it's like a much more thorough explanation of what each of those bullets represent. Yeah, I was just wondering. I was also looking at other presentations of this, and I'm, I'm wondering about the time frame for this. So are you saying that the final Kilimanjaro uh, stage is uh, reached in September? Yes. Think about Kilimanjaro as a, as a milestone to make sure that we are all in the same page. It's not a set of milestones, it's just a milestone. milestone. We'll come out with new milestones in the future. Uh, it's open if we're going to call them as mountains or not. Uh, but basically, it's trying to, to get the best of what we used to have in the past with releases to bring that to the table again. Think about, about it in the, those terms. Yeah. Uh, one, one, uh, I guess, clarification on Bootegecker. I guess Bootegecker is the kind of the, the area which is most unknown to us sumo folks because it's an area where we have barely explored. So Ebay has um, spearheaded this effort, and we're so Ebay and I are meeting with Chris Lee and Mark Crandon uh, next week to talk to to talk about the implications of support. Um, if any one of you guys are interested in um, getting more involved in Butegecko, you should you should speak up, you know now or or later. Because I'm not convinced that Ebay wants to be driving this uh, moving forward. It, it might like be or it might may not be. <laughs> it's uh, I know that Ebay indicated that this might be overloading him a little bit. So. I hope I, you know, it's a, it's fair for me to say that, Eli. But but, so if yeah. if other people are interested in in participating, um, let us know. But but um, for now, we simply know that we don't really know a lot, and next week we will know more. I, I just wanted to point out that uh, tonight or later today, whatever your uh, time zone is, there's going to be a call with the community initiated by uh, Santiago Holman. I don't know if you're uh, if you know about it. Otherwise, I just continue the ether path. And uh, he's trying to put like a community effort together, and uh, Ricky and I are attending it uh, as part of the Sumo team. So we're gonna be checking that out from the community side uh, okay. to see what's building there. And um, I don't know. I mean, definitely we need to find someone who drives it uh, within our team. But just to let you know, and if there's anyone interested, just um, I'll just post the, the link. Okay. Well, and and also please please keep us posted on on the outcome of that meeting. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I mean, th there's a there's a lot of unknowns right now, of, especially with Butegecko. But I I would also say that with other areas of Kilimanjaro. Um, so, thanks yeah, I mean, very much for this for this uh, for this intro and this kind of an overview of, of the whole project, Eba. Yeah. I so I'm just giving say? you the 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 really the highlight because a, a lot of the stuff at the bottom is still unclear. So I mean. Questions about timeline with Boot to Gecko, when it's going to be launched, et cetera, et cetera are unclear. Uh, it's known that we need to have it ready. Uh, we need to have the minimum viable product by August because of our partnerships. But when are we going to be launching and all that stuff? Uh, it, it doesn't only depend um, on Mozilla, so we, we cannot really commit to anything, uh, especially at Sumo. We, I mean, we 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 are the last ones almost listening about this. So next week, hopefully, we'll have a better picture. Cool. After um, the meeting. Yeah. And just to Any be clear, just to be clear, yes. Uh, so about Puti Gecko specifically, uh, I mean, from the Sumo side, the first user-facing part will not be there before the end of this year or early next year, right? Wait. Uh, the, it depends. So. Um, Telefonica, well, I think the, the answer to that is most likely yes or no. <laughs> we will not have it ready. Uh, but the, the, so the thing to realize is that we will have more information next week. But uh, Telefonica is shipping a product which is, uh, I don't want to get too technical here because we're, we frankly don't really have time for it. 
Uh, but um, as far as I can understand, they're they're not going to use the Firefox branded um, uh, basic well, core set of apps, front end, right? Sorry, uh, they will actually develop their own, and it, they they will very obviously support that on their own too. So it's not like we're trying to build a kind of a tier one help the support here for 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 a Firefox branded phone. Um, what we may end up doing is to commit to supporting the basic apps that we ship as part of the, the, the kind of the unbranded, the non-Telefonica branded Firefox phone experience um, so that we can support the help desk front ends on, that are outsourced. So the, uh, these are all things that we need to figure out. We, we simply don't know the answers, but, but just to, to sort of reduce any stress from anyone that we might end up with, uh, you know, a global help desk operation of 200 plus people, um, that's very likely not going to happen. But okay, what exactly will happen, we need to figure out. Okay, just one more, uh, my maybe technical question, but also to understand the uh, product. Uh, will Telefonica use uh, the um, uh, Persona login system that we're developing? I don't know. Uh, you might mean, I don't know if you know. I don't think uh, anyone knows that, to be honest. No, it's completely unclear. Persona is not, okay. actually, Persona is not really focusing on anything uh, boot to Gecko right now. It's more focused on the whole marketplace and apps ecosystem. Right. Yeah. And they're trying to get traction on that side. Right. And uh, last question, I, 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 I think I read somewhere or, or I heard in the wiki or something that it was going to be called Firefox OS or something. Uh, just a naming I, thing. As speculation. I'm... Okay. Yeah, uh, no, no comments at all. Uh, that hasn't been decided, but, you know, it's possible. I don't know. Okay. I know that they want to use the Firefox brand one way or another, um, but... I thought I heard see. Firefox we, we OS. Probably. I thought yeah. I heard it was Firefox OS at Moscow or somewhere, whatever. Uh, they're going to call I just, it I just, Firefox I just don't believe probably. it's been decided. That's that's what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> okay. But, but okay. I know that that has been circulated. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, I kind of need to keep naming in mind because we are testing naming and kind of having, you know, too many products that are called one way, too many products that are called the other way or something. Uh, kind of might create problems, and then, you know, I might need to create more spaces between the design or something, right? So, uh, yeah, so, you know, we had this problem with Persona and Home and, and stuff. So, yeah, anyway, that's that's that. Yeah, and, and if, if, you know, marketing experts could also tell you that there are always risks of uh, spreading the brand value too thin by using sub-branding. Um, so normally that's actually something that should be avoided, but I don't know how well you know what the exact plans are here. So anyway, you're quite right. But as soon as we know those things, I, I guess you know you would also know. Brom, you were awfully close to the camera, but that that shouldn't stop us from moving on uh, <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, because we need to move on. So the next, uh, who wants to go next with the presentation? Uh, and, and lastly, thank you, Ebay. I, I think I said it, but I want to repeat it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Rosanna Madalina, do you want to go and do you want to give us an update on the, the Moss Camp experiences, takeaways? Sure. Rosanna? OK. Um, so there's in the wiki, we, we, we created a wiki page. Um, instead of a presentation, we thought that might be easier for people uh, just listening to the call. Um, so if you go to the community section, you can click it, and then you get it. So, uh, Madalina? Yep. You want to start, and then I can go with the steps. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah. yeah. So let's go. So um, as you know, Madalina uh, and I and, and Ricky, we attended the uh, MOS camp uh, in Buenos Aires um, from the 20th to the 22nd. Uh, there was a um, there was a hack day. Uh, I think on Friday, then Saturday, Sunday, it was the uh, the mosque camp with the um, communities from Latin America. They have their own national communities, meaning like Mozilla Mexico, Mozilla Argentina, Mozilla Peru, and and they have this uh, this bigger uh, community which is called Mozilla Hispano that includes also people from Spain, and um, some of them were also there. 
and there was of course the Brazilian community. Um, it was actually, <laughs> uh, I, I think that, you know, just a, a couple of days passed, but uh, after the Moscow, I think that Madalena and I were just super energized. It was, uh, it was truly amazing to uh, get to know everyone. Uh, also, it's incredible the amount of energy and passion that we saw there. Uh, we were just blown away. And not only, but, you know, like the general community, especially the support community, uh, we have to say the Hispano support community really is amazing we we wanted to say this again because we saw so much energy and passion uh and and we hope that we can get there uh with our global community yeah um, sorry to, to interrupt just wanting to add that i have never seen anything like this <laughs> in terms of passion and commitment with these guys they were absolutely amazing so thumbs up for um, hispano community yeah just like super amazing and 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 we I mean I think that we all can learn a lot from them and hopefully we will get the passion they have. <laughs> um, so um, let me talk you uh, let me talk about uh, what we did there. We had a couple of sessions. Um, Ricky, I just saw that we didn't include your session uh, uh, here. Uh, maybe at the end if you want to talk a little bit about it. Um, you, you can do that. So first we had two sessions. The first one was a presentation and uh, what we try to do since I mean the, the audience of our, of our session was of course uh, you know you know Mozilla contributors who are very engaged. What we try to focus on was a presentation that shows how easy it is to uh, get involved in, uh, with Sumo and how fun it can be because what we want is our contributors to be able uh, to advocate for Sumo and to bring new people in since this is one of the most important uh, tasks that we have and what our contributors are also struggling with. They, they, they all say that it's hard to, to build community. So we focus on that uh, presentation. We try to put the facts about Sumo in a very easy to understand way, try to put a lot of energy in it, and um, we're going to circulate some photos and we're going to uh, post a blog. And we're gonna make a, a, we're gonna make a post uh, a blog posting uh, because there was like a this highlight we we built this uh, uh, phone booth uh, you know trying to keep up with the uh, uh, metaphor of you know you can be a superhero at, at sumo and so in the middle of the of our presentation uh, Santiago comes up dressed like Batman and everyone starts laughing. Uh, <laughs> So that that was actually a pretty a pretty nice moment. Everyone was like uh, very energized after that, and I, and I think that it kind of um, it, it 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 gives the idea of how easy and and how fun it can be to be part of Sumo. So that was our presentation. We got a lot of good feedback afterwards. I think uh, for a lot of people, Sumo was sort of like this, you know, like mm, it's not so nice. And I think that for 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 the people that were at the presentation, I think that we kind of change that perception and uh, hopefully we can keep on doing that and help other contributors to do that through this presentation and through this art of um, uh, this kind of energy. Um, Sorry, can I break, uh, just a follow up question on that, you, you said yeah. that they, people f felt like ah, they, they weren't Liking uh, Sumo before you had that presentation? No, 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 it's not about that. But, you know, like Sumo, it sounds like support, you know, people with problems. You know, like there are other projects where, you know, people feel like, you know, like maybe some people feel more attracted to marketing, you know, at the first step. And, and support is something that's, you know, it's not on the, on the top of the mind. And I think that a lot of people saw like, okay, this, this could be fun too. It's, you know, it's, it's not only about problems. Um, so I, I think that, that that was what, what, what we could achieve. But of course, I mean, there's there's people who have just this natural thing for helping and they will come to us and of course we want them to come here. Yeah, just, just to add on that, I don't think that a lot of people actually perceived be uh, Sumo before as fun or like help can be fun. As Rosanna said, if you say PR or like whatever, uh, people say, oh yeah, that's super cool. But if you say support and then people with problems, they're a bit, uh, yeah, I'm not so sure. So, like, our the whole scope of this presentation and the, the phone booth and the superhero was to actually show people that, you know, having, uh, doing support, it can also be fun. And I think we have achieved that um, also with the, like, showing them around Army of Awesome and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I think we also we try to focus on how easy it is and the impact that you can have. I think that that's not very clear, and maybe for the for our contributors at the beginning. So we try to focus 
focus on that. So the second thing, the second session that we had uh, was the interactive session. And, you know, it was just the last, the very last session at the, at the mask camp. It was caught. We didn't have like a great place, but still we got around 50, uh, 15 people and we all sat, to, uh, sat down together and they brought a lot of knowledge about Sumo because they know it. They know the platform very well. And, you know, since they're not using our forum tools, um, the, the conversation uh, was uh, a lot about uh, the localization tools and, you know, the pain points. And But also not only, you know, like the problems they have, but also the strategies they have to uh, use our, 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 our tools. So what we... Uh, we came up to the idea that maybe they, we can share strategies, you know, like the, if, when they localize, they have different strategies and they use other tools. So we're going to try to get them all together so that if we can put uh, the development resources right away, at least some people see other strategies uh, for coping with our translation tools until we have them, you know, uh, you know we can make them better. So I think that was uh, fairly positive because they had a lot of, uh, you know, very detailed feedback and, and then uh, they also shared with us the, uh, their strategies. Um, so that was cool. Um, Marlena, you want to talk maybe about the phone booth uh, on the Cape Butler? Yeah. So one thing that we did, as Rosanna already, already uh, told you guys, uh, was to have this phone booth where we had uh, we had a computer and then we had people um, over to answer questions on the the army of awesome so we we just basically showed them around on how to use army of awesome and how they can use twitter and um, to to help out uh and all that um so it was a great way of getting started so Another thing that we had in the booth was um, the form that Rosanna created so for the Cape Butler, where it's basically you enter your details and it's just a reminder for you as a contributor. Um, you can set up a reminder to remind you to, to help on Sumo like one time, two times, three times, four times a month, depending on the, how much time you have. Uh, so we had some people uh, signing, up, uh, signing up there as well. I think that was quite well received, uh, like people were quite excited about it unfortunately we did not have a lot of time to you know to to show them around because most camp was pretty packed but um i do think it's a it's a good start um so we should continue doing that can i just break in with uh, a question to to everyone uh, i realized that we we're not going to be able to make the 60 hour 60 minute window for this meeting so i'm wondering how many people have to leave in five minutes Brom, okay. So, I have another meeting uh, to run to, so. Yeah, that, that, no, that, that's totally oh. fine. But I, I just wanted to make sure that mo at least the majority were, were would be able to stay, because um, I think that the, I, I don't kind of I don't want to cut you off at, at all. Um, uh, but at the same time, I want to make sure that people people can actually listen to the, to it all. Um, so, so sorry. Thank you. Please go on. Um. Okay, should I continue about the community work day or do you want to do that, Rosanna? Um, if you want, I can do that and then maybe you can talk about the next steps. Yeah, yeah, do it. So, um, yeah. we went to... Yeah, sorry? No. Okay, uh, sorry, so I, I was gonna. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. For, I mean, talking about the next steps would be like. I, I, I think maybe the most valuable thing for for this whole group, since we, we've all read the email before, might be to just uh, talk about your biggest takeaways from from this event and where you think we should be investing our time moving forward. So the next step that you talked about, uh, what mm -hmm. was sort of the, the the best? What was the highlights here, and what was the main uh, thing you learned from this that you didn't know before? Um, so I think one of the main things here were um, was that uh, we need to grow visibility when it comes to Sumo because a lot of people don't know um, that not necessarily that we exist, but they don't know that they can help and how they can help and how actually easy it is to help. Um, so that's a big point, and I think that we need to do that both uh, in terms of uh, community, but also with the um, with the, the other Mozillians. Um, another thing was talking about localization because, of course, uh, most of the people in Moscamp was were localizers. Um, we got a lot of feedback on the localization tools. 
which are a bit difficult to use um, and not too user friendly uh, for all of people. So one thing that we are going to do is, as we already uh, mentioned, is to start a community discussions on the contributor forum where we have people to actually that can share individual uh, approaches towards localization work. Because it seems that each and every person who does localization has its own style of doing it that will that just makes his or her life easier um, because it seems that with the tools that we have right now it's not so easy to do it so each and every person tries to approach it differently so we thought if we could just bring all these people together to discuss about it and then learn from each other and then you know maybe we can find a way for everybody um, to do it or also we can help out new people that are trying to do it and they, they get stuck uh, the other thing regarding this is to try to look into ways of optimizing some of the localization processes or improve the localization tools to go together with Sumo Dev. Like you already <coughs> already got some feedback on that, um, and see how we can actually make that easy for for our for our contributors because that's a big problem. That's basically the main point in our feed all our feedback sessions. We're like. Um, yeah, another another next step is to follow up with Antonio. We already spoke about uh, him in the email. So Antonio is um, this uh, amazing support person from Mos, uh, Mos, uh, Mozilla Hispano. He has like his own support website and all kind of tips and tricks uh, regarding Firefox support. So we want to follow up with him and try to learn from him. Um, and maybe see if we can apply some of his ideas uh, to everybody, not just Mozilla Hispano. So maybe all the community, all the support communities can uh, contribute from uh, from this. Um, another step is to get Army of Awesome to try to make it better. So a lot of people like Army of Awesome and they want to use it, but they also had a lot of feedback on it. Um, so um, I have already discussed with Ricky on some ideas to try to improve Army of Awesome, have like a version two kind of thing, maybe have a mobile version. Um, there are like a lot of ideas there. He, I guess he can talk more about it. Um, and then, yeah, continue working on, and on growing visibility for Sumo. So we really, really, really need to work on that. And we really need to, to show people what we're doing and uh, also contributors, also people who are working on different projects just to talk to them about Sumo, talk to them about Army of Awesome, talk to them about knowledge base and all that. And just, you know, if needed, take them by the hand, show them the computer and what they need to do. Um, because I think that's a big thing that we're missing right now. Um, I don't know if Rosan, do you want to add anything? I just like kind of went no, to uh, the list that we had. Uh, no, definitely. I think that the, I mean those, those were the next steps. And and as you said, I just wanted to add that the community day was uh, you know was amazing. Uh, we already said that there was a lot of passion, and uh, you know the I, I wanted I wanted to tell that the uh, Mozilla Hispano they have different uh, sections, you know. And they have a support uh, section, and every six months they change the person responsible uh, for the for the support. So they're very good organized, and uh, and they gave us you know like they have every uh, you know all the, the 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 work very well organized, and and, and this is part uh, you know like the 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 work from Antonio who's who's amazing, and I just wanted to say like to everyone that Antonio is awesome, and if any one of you needs any support supporting, I think that uh, he would be glad to help, and we will try to get all of his amazing knowledge and passion to Sumo. So uh, we hope to get that soon because we all can learn a lot about it. We'll still keep Antonio's brain. been working on support for the last eight years, right? Eight yeah. years, right. He's a champion, a superhero, you know, like and he's the most all passionate. The glory. Yeah, he's the most passionate person you have ever met. Like when it comes to support, he knows everything. It's like his mm -hmm. life, so yeah, and, 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 and I think that the, the, the key here is that, you know, it's not only about, you know, solving problems, but he really puts himself in the place of the user and he loves Firefox so deeply that he can convert anyone. So that's, I think, a big takeaway. Maybe we can bring his energy here, you know, like to love Firefox so much. And, yeah. But, you know, we I should get him on say. video. I'd like, to, I'd like to talk to him. I'd like yeah. to see him maybe <laughs> featured on the Sumo blog or something. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. 
Definitely. So, so to wrap up, you, you, you mentioned localization tools, making the localization um, better. And I, I, it sounded like you were saying that you actually had some specifics there too, uh, that you solicited some feedback. So maybe the next step there is to sit down with... Um, um, actually, the, well, the next I guess step formalize is, those ideas. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. What we're going to do is, I mean, we heard a lot of a lot of people, but we also want to uh, involve everyone, not only the Hispano and the Portuguese community, but we want to get everyone on board. And, uh, and we want to make like a more formal uh, workshop. Actually, what I would also suggest is uh, we already know also from our discussion at the last um, uh, Mozilla Mods Camp in Berlin that our localizers have very different workflows so that the one that we have doesn't, I mean, it can't fulfill everyone's needs. But what we can do is have these meetings that you talked about, which are awesome, and then find the points that are important to every single workflow and try to improve them. Like I'm sure there are steps that every single community wants to do, no matter what their current workflow is, and we can improve that. Um, so the first step would be to get them together to, together to talk about their workflows, I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, can, we can do that, you know, afterwards. We, we will get everyone together and try to make a, a workshop and, 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 and work together. I mean, we, we don't have to change everything from the beginning. We can also just share strategies. Right, yeah, yeah I, I mean, that would be a so good you first can do step. that. Right, you can do that first and then we can also learn what, what the similarities are between those workflows so that we can try to optimize for that. Mm -hmm. totally. yep. And then you mentioned grow visibility of SUMA, and I, I presume that you meant uh, for volunteers, for, for, for communities. Yes. Yes, and I mean, as, as I said, not only, um, you know, people who are doing localization because they're basically the ones that know Sumo, but there are a lot of people involved in other projects that don't know Sumo. There are a lot of people involved in, in like, don't know, marketing or PR or whatever development that don't really know Sumo. Um, and they don't know that what they can do. So, you know, that's a, a good way to just show them around. Okay. Uh, and, and lastly, you, we need to integrate Antonio <laughs> into yeah. Sumo. But 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 let's so let's follow up on the specifics here. I mean, we we should we should keep the discussions going in the contributor channel. Um, the, sorry, the contributor forum, uh, and discuss the specifics on the changes that you you the uh, for the feedback that you solicited around um, the platform. Any questions? Any other thoughts from Madalena Rosanna? Thanks, by the way, for for an excellent wrap up of of the event. I, I, have a I guess. Everyone is jealous for not attending. <laughs> Go ahead, Roland. Where is Antonio based? Sorry, I missed that. Which country? Which time zone? Spain. Um, in Spain. Oh, and what is his uh, a sumo nickname or user ID? Well, uh, he's actually he supports people on Mozilla Hispano. That's the point. He, uh, he uses okay, he's the, a rich person, so he's not on sumo because it's only English. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But cool. he's on Army of Awesome. Yeah, um, right. He's an Army of Awesome. So the thing is, like, they, they sort of discuss all the Sumo stuff in their own forum, in their own list. So they're not on our contributor forum, and I don't know how we can, I don't know. I, I mean, we can't just tell them, hey, use this instead. But it would be nice if they would collaborate with the other community, uh, yeah. the other locales. Right. Well, I mean, maybe we could find a way, a middle ground. Maybe we could share some in information. Um, you know, we have people on. We have Rosanna, for example, you speak Spanish. Uh, Madalena, I forget if you also speak Spanish. Uh, I understand Spanish. Do you understand <laughs> Spanish? Okay. Well, she's, la she's Latina so. in, in her heart. I'm Latina. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, so well, yeah, I heard that you, you, you were referred to as the, the, the sumo chicas during yeah. the event. <laughs> I, I don't know where I read that, but I, I thought that was awesome. Um, Anyway, so we, we, we should wrap up, but, but that is just to, to answer your, your, your comment there, Ricky, about um, where they communicate. I think we see similar things in, in the Mozilla, uh, the, the Italian community forum. They also have their separate forums where they mostly communicate. But it might be that we can get some representation on the Sumo contributor forum too, to make sure that they're included. Because, uh, I mean, I'd love to hear their opinions about our platform and, and see where we align and how we can uh, work together. And, you know, I, and I know them. Uh, Rusana is, uh, and Madalena is just as interested in that. So, yeah. Uh, but but with that said, thanks very much. We need to move on. And by the way, my connection is pretty terrible. So can people hear me? Yeah. 
Okay. Can and, and just just so. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, j just to right. make one comment about that, so every community has its own forum where they're discussing things, the German one as well. But what we have is we have a, a, um, a news group, sorry, a mailing list, uh, where we actually exchange, um, so, so where we can send information to local leaders, but also get back uh, and get discussions between the communities, which isn't happening too often, unfortunately. But there is a communication list? channel already. It's the local leaders meeting with the sumo local leaders. So if you become a so localizer, a local leader, you, you get on that list, basically. Okay. Um, just throw it out there. Say I love the Kate Butler. And I think it's a great little solution. And I was just curious how many people signed up, if you knew. And, um, you know, we should definitely put this on some um wiki pages for mozilla meetings this week so people can sign themselves up because that's that's i think that's just a great way um michelle act uh, sorry um actually it's it just a handful of people sign up because the thing is that we needed to go there and show them around so we don't have the process yet uh, uh figure out on how to you know if, if you're at an event that you just put a, a computer there and people go and sign up for themselves and the time was just too precious to stay there in front of the booth and, and, and try to get people sign up. Um, so we need to work on that. Uh, but what we have is the form, which is the support uh, mozilla.org slash reminder, and then people can sign up for that. Yeah, I just signed up. I think uh, you know, great. put it on the <laughs> co-meeting, um, you know, and let people know they can sign up. Um, I, I'm also I'm, I'm also going to work with uh, uh, with John uh, uh, later on on the whole you know like uh, creative and artwork so that it really looks nice and you have like a nice cake butler and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so if if this is going to be permanent, we also we should do something about the localization of this because currently it's only in English. But I can imagine that the local communities would also like to use this. So totally, but but I think that we we need to to just you know try this out and you know we're not investing a lot. We're just using very simple uh, solutions, and if it works out, then I think that we can escalate it. You know, it 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 can be easily made for a lot of people. Right. But that's a good point. All right. Um... So again, my, I don't know what's happening, but my connection is kind of spotty. So every person is sort of dropping out and dropping in on the video grid here, which makes me uneasy in thinking that <laughs> uh, everyone is, is falling asleep. Tyler, are you still awake? <laughs> I think it's because we have... Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, oh. I, I wanted to give you a couple of options. I know that you wanted to go through the the, um, the project that you've been working on, and maybe... So I have a hard finish in 20 minutes from now. Uh, do you think you could? Uh, do you think it's possible to do this within 10 minutes, or is that? Yeah, I can just. Uh, what I'm just can do is do a quick summary of it, and then I'll put up a blog post with more details um, today or tomorrow. That'd be great. Uh, That'd be great. If that'll All right. Be good. All right. So, uh, so officially over to you then, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the, uh, the last. Uh, Chang, Ebai, and I have been working on going through and analyzing some of the Sumo threads to see where we're strong in responding to users and where we need to give better tools to the community. Um, what we basically did, this is just our initial analysis thing, it, it's evolved quite a bit since it was first um, started. Um, what I basically did is from April 1st to April 7th, we went through, analyzed every thread that was submitted in that week, uh, which is about 365. Um, put them in categories and then to look and see how good of a response rate each category got and which threads were more likely to have a good solution posted rather than no solution or a weak solution. Um, Pretty much what we, what I found out was about 50% of threads are have about a generic um, try safe mode, try this um, response. About 30 to 40% have a good solid answer, which doesn't necessarily mean a solution. 
Um, but an answer that if the user came back and tried it, probably would, if it didn't help, would give them a good starting point. Um, and then some of the other ones, there's a few edge cases in there as well. Um, no response, stuff like that. So pretty much what it seems like is of those 50% that have just a general um, answer posted to the thread, um, users don't feel very confident coming back when a contributor um, doesn't have a specific solution. And so what it seems like we can do to help increase that solid answer um, rate is to give the community some better tools um, to be able to give users more of a direct answer. Um, so in the case of, let's say, a crash, um, teaching the community how to read a crash ID um, and go through and analyze that to find what the cause could be. Um, I'll be posting up a blog post with all of the details, most likely later this afternoon. Um, basically, what I would like, um, it's going to have a couple different proposed ideas and solutions that we could do to try to increase that solid answer rate um, for the threads. Um, basically, if you guys and any of the community members who um, are watching this wouldn't mind reading through it all, seeing how useful the what we actually analyzed is, if there's more information you want to see, if we should repeat it um, every so many weeks to analyze trends, etc. Um, and then looking through the different solutions and tools that I posted on there and seeing, you know, would this actually help? Um, if you have any other ideas, tweaks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, it's and, pretty and much. So just so I understand, th th that will be part of the blog post, or is this already part of? Uh, that will all be in the blog. I... Okay. So you okay? Yeah. Sorry. Just wanted to make sure because I wasn't sure if I was supposed to see n uh, some links uh, here or there. <laughs> no, I, can, I, make I sure can I was post. Missing. I can post um, some of the stuff if you guys would like to see it. I have some Google Docs that have some of the raw data. Um, and then I'll have the um, post later today. So with all the, I guess, user-friendly, eye-friendly, human-readable stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'll probably wait personally for, for, this, uh, for the blog post and read that tomorrow morning. But okay. if anyone else wants to, to dig through the raw data right now, then Obviously, let Tyler know. Um, uh, just a question, Tyler. So you said 50% of those questions got a um, generic answer uh, to uh, get a new profile or uh, do something generic. But uh, did you check like whether it was possible to um, give a different answer to those questions? Yeah, with some of them, I don't have the exact percentages with me right now. Um, obviously, with some of the answers, you can't give any more of a detail. Um, what I tried to do when going through and actually doing the analysis was to look at um, just threads that if you knew how to um, give a detailed answer, you probably could have. Um, obviously, some of them you, you can't, um, but the majority of them, if, if, you wanted, if you had more tools, you could definitely give a more detailed answer. So. The, other, the other option is always to ask for follow-up questions. So it's like, this could be a solution, but if you can provide me this, 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 and that, maybe in the next answer I can give you a better solution. And that's what we're exactly. not doing at all. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I found in Thunderbird that people don't give us the information. You're guessing. Not, no matter how much you try to give them a specific answer, you're guessing. I don't know if it's different in Firefox. Right. Mm -hmm. Same. But safe well, mode is actually asking for more information. So when you say try safe mode, you actually try to figure out, like, is it a Firefox problem or is it an extension problem? So I think that is actually asking for more information. Yes, but what sometimes happens you is... Can, um, this is how you frame it. I mean, you yeah. can frame it as if you are using safe mode and you find this, uh, try this, 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 and that. And if not, just came back to me, and I can give you better details. And if this but, is but the that, that would be Tyler's idea of a more more customized response, right? Yes. Exactly. Pretty much. Pretty much um, under the weak answers, I didn't necessarily put at just if there was an answer that was just try and safe mode. It didn't necessarily automatically go into weak answers. 
if someone just posted a link and said try safe mode and that was all they gave, that's a weak answer. But if you say try safe mode, if it works um, there, try disabling hardware acceleration, disable extensions, et cetera, et cetera, that's more of a solid answer there. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's how it's how the um, step is worded um, more than the step itself. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and there are, uh, um, I did start a um, thread in the contributor forums about getting more information. Um, one is crash IDs, um, threads about crashes that don't have crash IDs are like almost impossible to diagnose um, until you get one. So, you know, making it, giving us a better chance of getting a crash ID when someone submits a thread, you know, different steps like that to get us more information um, so we can have to do as many follow-up uh, posts. So, so to conclude, uh, including steps like try safe mode is not in itself a, a way that sort of uh, demotivates users to come back or, or you know, reduces people, people's confidence. It's more like when you don't provide a context, so you don't make it specific. You don't make it sort of exactly. customized to that particular user. Um, exactly. I'm wondering how this relates to the new feature that is in Nightly right now, the reset Firefox feature. I'm not sure if it's even, is it in Android too? I forget. It's in uh, Aurora. Well, sorry. Then again, right it's now there is nothing to migrate. It's in beta even. In yeah. Beta. So so the next so Firefox 13 will include the the um, a, 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 you know a step to reset Firefox. It's a very generic solution, but the good thing is that it's fully automatic. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering if if that is something that we should even promote in the possibly even in the ask a question flow before they submit the question, like try this thing uh, and see if that fix problem. I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, I think that feature is the thing like forever, our, all of our solving problems has been about troubleshooting. Let's see if we can narrow down what the problem is and fix that one thing. Yeah. I think given the choice, well, I mean, the, given the, the choice between doing all this work and fix the one thing and like, I don't care, just <laughs> fix it. Most people will take that. I don't care. Just uh, fix it with one click. Yeah, that, that's yeah, the way to scale this. And and um, I mean, we've been waiting for this feature for God knows how many years, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so, uh, and that is in no way uh, critique to against anyone. But but I feel like this is that that's a big thing that can actually really significantly change uh, the way we might approach supporting tricky stuff like this that involves. 50% apparently of the people in the forum, try safe mode, try this thing, try that thing. Like what if we could just tell them, try this thing, just press this button, see if it fixes it. If not, come back to us, please. I don't know, I mean, but, but that, that might be huge and it might be something that we can even do, you know, trigger before they end up in the forum. But, but we should probably not, um, I, I was really just thinking out loud. I feel like I, I would really want to read your blog post and, and uh, Dig into this data before before um, uh, knowing w how that relates to this new feature. Yeah, no, I I agree that that'll be useful. You know, I'm even more hopeful about the new feature coming in 14. Like when you install it, actually reinstall it, asks you to create a new profile. It's not in 14. That will be even better. It's not in 14. Not in 14? I'm my fingers for 15? 15. I don't, it, it, oh, it has to be okay. developed yet. Like there's a whole bunch of work. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you have a awesome. bug for that, Michael, if you could drop a, a, a line in the Pound Sumo channel, the that'd be good. Part? The yet to be developed uh, feature that yeah. uh, during the reinstall. I'm curious, uh, Tyler, in this analysis, do you have, um, I'm, I'm always curious about the number of users that actually do come back and respond, the percent overall percentage of users that respond um, to an answer. Do you have those numbers in this analysis for the group of questions you looked at? I didn't put them directly in, um, but I can pull them out pretty quickly and get that to you if you'd like. Yeah, I'm always curious about what our rate is of, of getting people back uh, to come back and give us a little more information. 
Yeah, I, I'd and be very curious in something. that information too. So if you, you you might even want to include that in the blog post if it's you know at yeah. all relevant. Yeah. yeah, I can I can pull that out and throw that in there for you guys. So and that's definitely something that if we did get a higher percentage of people coming back, um, that it'll probably help the solid answer go up because some of those weak answers might actually have been real answers. I just couldn't tell. So. Yeah, I, think yeah, I mean, that, that might reveal a flaw. Uh, uh, did I say flaws? Uh, Michelle, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think it's one of those numbers we watch, right? Like, um, if we can increase that number, it sort of floats all boats, right? If we can get people to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think we need to increase that number. We need to figure out why. And, and, and it's interesting that it might be the quality of the answer that triggers people to come back. I mean, that's not, I guess it's not surprising, but um, it'll be interesting to see how much, how large that effect is. But it might also be the way the email notifications are worded or presented um, that might discourage people from clicking it or, I don't know. But that seems like some uh, one way, one thing that we should optimize. Hey, uh, Tyler, I'm looking. I think we're all looking forward to to the blog post. Um, I we need to get going because we have five more minutes, and then I at least I need to drop off to another meeting. So we still haven't actually gone through the roundtable section. Um, let me try to pull up my the agenda again. Okay, so we have a bunch of questions from SATAV and, um, and that's it. So, I'm uh, sorry, I, I'm just going to go through this real quick, as quick as I can. I haven't read this before. Can I ask, the first question is, can I ask what you think about the, the following pages? And then, um, uh, I think this is the link to the community-powered uh, Facebook support. I, Madalena, um, are you? Yeah, Madalena, this is really very related yeah, to the know, goal that you're. I know about this this page. Uh, Sadav showed me showed it to me before. I'm not sure if you guys know about it. So it's uh, the community page that uh, he has built um, together with other contributors for Facebook support. Um, so basically, the message here is that the the page looks good, but right now uh, I'm working with William on setting up the um, social media strategy for Sumo for this quarter. We have not. Uh, set up anything clear yet, so I cannot say anything about this page if we're going to integrate it or not. So um, I have talked to Sadav about it, I will follow up with him again on it, uh, and as soon as we, uh, William and I, and of course the Sumo team, um, will establish the, what's the s social media strategy for Sumo, we'll see what, what we can do. But that's uh, basically it. So right now we cannot make any promises or anything like that. Is the idea of this page okay, for people to ask and answer questions like we do in our forum yeah. to do it on Facebook? Yeah. So basically you have people uh, coming in from Facebook asking questions and then there are the contributors answering there. Yeah. Um, I've seen when it. are you having I like this it. meeting you said? Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, so to be honest, I'm concerned because I don't, I'm not convinced that we should be dealing with the the actual support activities on the social media platform. I'd much rather take an approach that we that we do on Twitter, which is to provide an answer but point people to Sumo because there's a there's mm -hmm. a I can't even list all the benefits of doing support on Sumo, but the, I mean, most notably, we will be able to detect what the user is running. Uh, the operating system, the install plugins. Uh, we have a community that is already established that are are doing one thing, which is to help people. So, one. Of, I'm not sure so, if sorry, doing this sorry separate to step in. for Facebook. No, go ahead. One one of the solutions that I, I I've been seeing in the past, and we're looking to to integrate with Lithium, that is a commercial product, is to actually create a tab within Facebook, uh, within a Facebook channel, whichever channel that you want to do it, that actually puts a front end there of your back end. So in this case, we can use our forum, 
but people will be posting to our forum from Facebook and and people working in our forum will be answering questions on Facebook without them even knowing that they are answering Facebook questions. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a, a story to, to explore and, and, and a capability that we we may want or we may not want to develop. But no, it's out there. It, it's like not that. anymore. The Firefox Facebook page already? We have something similar to that. Yes, we do have. Yeah, we do have a Sumo page on, on uh, Facebook on the Firefox page. So if you go there, you can directly search Sumo through Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, uh, articles, the top articles listed there. It's just a um, I think what eBuy means is more about a way yeah. to post questions yeah. that are more, so more that about is the different. Yeah, that's that is way that you, The way that Lithium does it, it actually uh, resembles the, the wall UI. So basically, for a regular User, it seems that they are actually writing in, in the wall uh, instead of writing in in a, in a separate place. It has some challenges, but um, um, from a constant point of view, it's something interesting. Yeah. So, well, so just to clarify, I mean, my my concerns uh, is is I think it's actually wonderful that SatDev and other one want to do uh, you know and drive support on Facebook. So that that is actually very cool. My, my only concern is that if we do this separately and we're kind of trying to build a subset of our community to to work on Facebook as opposed to Sumo, I worry about the long-term sustainability of that. Uh, what if people lose interest in that? And what if we all of a sudden create an island of people who try, who think that they can ask questions there, but they're not really getting the, the best type of support because we as a Sumo team are investing a lot of effort into the platform on our forum rather than this separate platform. So that's why I think the ideal would be to drive everything, every user to the same channel, just like we do on Army of Awesome on Twitter because then we can really control the whole interface, both for users and for contributors. So, uh, so you know, so I just wanted to clarify that I think, I think the effort here is, is wonderful. I'm just, I'm just not convinced that this is the best way of doing it. And I'd like to um, get to the bottom of that and discuss how we might do that, this the best possible way. Yep. Just one more note to that. It's also important to talk about the goals there. If the, if the goal of user to user support is also to provide a uh, growing knowledge base for or growing uh, base of, of posts that other people can see, like it is in our forum, then that won't work on Facebook because it's not searchable. So people searching on Google will not find that. They will find our forum, but they will not find our solutions in Facebook. Um, so that, uh, but that's uh, that's only if the goal is the same as in our forum. Maybe the goal is to actually show that Firefox cares uh, on social media. So because other people are also on Facebook and they're seeing that, then it might make sense. So it will be very important to talk about the goals that we want to achieve there. Yeah, as, as I said, uh, th there are countless of reasons why it would be more beneficial to have it on, on Sumo. But, but I would say that the goal is to increase the visibility, to increase, to ensure that uh, anyone who has a problem with our products should be able to find a solution. And it shouldn't really matter if they started out on Facebook, our, our Facebook fan page, or on Twitter, or wherever. We should be there to help. So that, that, that part is, uh, I think we're pretty much on the same page about. But, but then there's a the question of where is the best place to do it. Um, and technically, you know, how to do it. Yep. So you're right, Kader. Um Michelle, did you say something? No? I thought I heard some... some uh, okay. Um, guys, uh, we need to time out <laughs> because <laughs> I need to run off to this other meeting. Uh, this was a great meeting. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I really appreciated the discussions and the presentations from from uh, from Ebay and from Rosanna Madalena, from Tyler. Um, any last stuff that needs to be discussed before we before we end the call? I know that there's a bunch of stuff in, on the wiki page. Is there anything that needs our attention? I Michelle? just wanted to say there is um, another meeting, an IRC meeting, this Thursday. So to continue the conversation about Facebook and everything, the guys that are doing that are going to be on IRC on Thursday. Okay. Great. And. If there are other things that we should talk about that we didn't have time to today, um, please let's keep the discussion going in the contributor forum. And uh, we all know where to find each other online. So have a great week.
thanks for today and talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.